Hello Space Cats, it's me Jules. A little while ago I mentioned that I bought a new food dehydrator and that my new total obsession is foraging. So today's video is all about foraging for stuff and making it into other stuff that we can enjoy when the days inevitably turn colder and the light turns, well, sort of darker. Let's have a look round the garden and see if we can find some stuff. Oh look, here's a thing. Someone left me a feather on my Nana's ice plant. I'm always surprised at the different iterations of pink that this plant has on its flowers. And then right next to it is Mary Berry's Rose, which is so big and luscious and it smells fantastic. Time to cut off this beautiful bloom to make something to see me through the winter and all that sea swimming. I'll put that aside while I tackle my herb bed. My marjoram and thyme dried out way too much in a pot, so I replanted them here. And the thyme, my favourite herb, is looking very sorry for itself, but if you look really carefully, there is a tiny, tiny bit of growth, so I haven't given up hope yet. This is called Self Heal. I discovered I have it growing in the garden all over, so I'm now growing it on purpose to harvest and to use for my Crohn's disease. It's great for other ulceration issues and IBS. And beautiful echinacea. This is the last of it. The main crop went in to make echinacea tincture to keep colds and flu at bay this year. Beetroot I planted four weeks ago and now I need to weed around it. The last bit of rhubarb and the leeks underneath it need some more light. Straight after you've picked it, make sure you take the leaves off so that you don't drain any of that delicious rhubarb fluid out of the stalks. And then put the leaves straight into the compost heap. Oh look, raspberries. The last of the blueberries. I've frozen loads so as I can make blueberry muffins in the winter. And now I'm going to show you how to make talc. Now, talcum powder that you buy has quite often got stuff in it that is there to preserve or keep it stable, but it's not really that good for you. And this is such a brilliant way to make something luscious and fantastic and luxurious out of three ingredients that you can find at home. Pick off the petals and discard that middle bit. You can put that in the, in, back in the compost. And then give the petals a nice rinse. And if you find any little creatures there, make sure you save them and put them back outside again. Earwigs quite often like going inside the roses. So make sure you rescue those guys if you find any. Oh, 
and once they're well rinsed just dry them off. Pat them dry with a tea towel or some kitchen paper. If you're lucky enough to have a dehydrator you can use that but if not just put these in the sun to dry out or somewhere warm on a radiator, in an airing cupboard, on a sunny windowsill. I've recently bought a dehydrator though so this is perfect. I'll spread them out evenly on the tray. On this day I was actually also drying some kale, so I put it in the top. But to retain the smell of the beautiful roses you might want to do it on a different day from doing something a bit smelly like kale. And then I left that for probably two or three hours. Then all you need is some dried lavender and some arrowroot powder, or if you don't have that, something like cornstarch, corn flour. You need about 50 grams of each thing. 50 grams of lavender, 50 grams of roses, 50 grams of arrowroot. But put the flower petals in first, give them a, a good whiz up, in whatever device you have that whizzes things up well. I've got a Nutribullet, that works quite well, but you might have a food processor instead. Failing that, the old method would be to use a pestle and mortar. <laughs> Once they're all whizzed up like this, crumbly and very fragrant, then you can add your arrowroot powder or your cornstarch. Give that a very quick whiz. It really does smell amazing. Bottle it. And give it to someone you love. So like I said before, it's been my total obsession this year. I have become a bit of a herbal fairy. And what's more, I intend to weave all that magic through my stories and my art. So if you have any interesting folklore or stories or interesting herbal recipes that you'd like to share, then please leave them in the comments below and I would love to have a look and investigate them. I have a whole list of things that I've made so far, including echinacea tincture without any alcohol in it. Um, I've made marigold oil and I've today made some elderberry syrup for when the winter gets a bit chilly. Oh, and I've made so much hedgerow jam, more than you could possibly shake a stick at. And I'll tell you what, it's flipping delicious. If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens, among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. And that covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating your book, and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website 
or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go! So that's it for this week. I am off to bury my face in the nearest bush and hedgerow to see what I can find. I will see you next week. Nanu, nanu.